This is the Comica CVM020. Before I start this, I need to say that Comica have sent me this little microphone for review. It's a very nice microphone, but there's one difference. It's a lavalier, but on the other end, there's an XLR plug. Now that might be slightly off-putting for someone at home when they want to use a lavalier because most cameras have a 3.5 millimeter socket for a, for a microphone. But you can get portable preamps to drive these things or at home as I use a, a recorder. So these things are really designed for in-studio use or in, in, a, in a quiet environment or for taking out on a camera that's got the right connections. So having an XLR plug means that it's going to have to have 48 volts phantom power put through it. Now you can put 24 through this I've found and you can even go down to 12 but what happens is the volume of the microphone drops not necessarily the noise but the volume does it might have implications actually later for the ultimate signal to noise ratio so it's probably best to put 48 volts through this thing. With most lavaliers when you're putting them into your camera your camera is only supplying something like 1.5 1.2 to 2 volts to your capsule. Now very often these capsules need a little bit more and so they're not really being driven to their full capabilities. When you put a bit more power into them they become a bit more lively. So having this means that okay yes you've got to put 48 volts in but at the other end there's, there's probably a downstep or a converter which gives it the right amount of voltage to make this microphone as lively as it can be. I have found with some microphones you can even put 12 volts into them and they, they really become very loud and lively and this one's just the same. As soon as you plug it into 48 volts rather than say 24 it becomes much more lively so you get a better dynamic sound from a microphone perhaps that's driven by an XLR socket giving 48 volts to the capsule. Actually it's not 48 volts because it's stepped down um, so that's probably taking whatever this thing needs. The CVM V020 comes with a couple of accessories. First of all you've got the foamy on the front there and you've also got this little Comica windshield. You can buy these separately as well which is quite nice. The only thing I do find with these windshields is they're held on not by, by uh, rubber band power or spring power but they're held on by this little catch and they can be a little bit fiddly to get on but um, once they're on they're on and that's it you know they, they, they'll stay on so I suppose it's very secure just a little bit more fiddly so um, the foamy is nice in that it's fitted on it's not just a little soft thing but it's quite tight and when you pull it off there's a little rubber grommet there that holds it in place so that's a rather nice thing because again you're not going to lose this very easily it has a 1.8 meter lead which is quite nice because that gives you room for maneuver there which is quite nice but also being an XLR means you can also put um, a long run on this so if you get a cable and put it on you can really put a long run on and you're not going to get too much noise or interference the only interference you can get is via this wire really rather than having a shielded wire so you could have long runs I think with this the other thing that's nice about this cable is it's quite rubbery and it's quite bendy it's not brittle and hard so it's um, it's quite maneuverable and, and it's quite soft it has an omnidirectional capsule its frequency response is very very wide for a lavalier from 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz now for the voice you don't really want to go that much lower than 80 say so 30 is plenty so for a lavalier this has quite a frequency range. Sensitivity is minus 30 dB so it's nicely sensitive too. It has a signal to noise ratio or a self noise figure of minus 65 dB. So let's see what it sounds like. This is the sound of the Comica CVM V020 and this is being worn as a normal type of lavalier just here. Now what I'm doing is I'm going into a, a Tascam DR70E recorder rather than going straight into the camera. I'll try that later but this is the sound that you would get. Now bear in mind in here I'm in a box room and I've got a spotlight with a fan on it so it's probably going to pick up the fan because it's an omnidirectional microphone. So it's going to pick up a little bit of room reverb probably and also that fan. So the self noise is going to be, I think the noise of the fan is going to be higher than the self noise of the microphone. This is what you get. So it's not that noisy, I don't think it's that noisy, it is picking probably that fan up quite nicely though. Now another thing that you can do is suspend these microphones above you and it gets them just that little bit closer. 
what I've done is I've put it up here, suspended and just holding it, but you can put it on a boom. And also bear in mind that because this has an XLR plug socket here down here, you can put a long run on it as well, and that won't in bring in a lot of interference. So just to show you, there it is. You could just take it just above your head, just there, and now you're using it almost like a boomed microphone just above your head. Now that can get you clearer audio because it's actually closer to my mouth than perhaps it is down here. And um, that's quite useful to know. Just to prove that it's an Omni, here it is from the front, here it is from the side, here it is from the rear, back to the side, and this is the front again. Um, you can also get a cardioid version of this. This is the sound of the Comica wearing the fluffy dead cat, here it is here. And this thing might be taking the treble down slightly. Uh, the only thing is, is when you go outdoors, you're going to have to put something over the microphone to cover it from the wind and especially the cardioid version. This is the Omni, so it's not going to be so susceptible to wind sound. But if you're going, going to go for the cardioid version, you most certainly would need this um, because they're much more susceptible to the wind sound. So this is the sound of the microphone being used with its own fluffy dead cat. That's the Comica dead cat. And it's got that little pull thing to fit it on, which is quite funny. You just tighten it up, but there's no way that it's going to come off. Just to show how secure this fluffy is, I'm going to pull it, try and pull it off. Look at this. That's going nowhere. So this is the sound of the Comica indoors. Bear in mind, I'm in a box room and I've got a fan going with the spotlight. So now what I'm going to do is take it outdoors where this will really come into its own. This is the sound of the Comica lavalier being used outside. And I think going outside gives it more of a chance because out here we haven't got the walls giving off reverberation and all that kind of thing. And in order to do this, I'm feeding the audio directly into my camera, but it's coming from a little miniature battery operated preamp on top of my camera and then of course it, that feeds the 48 volts to my microphone. Now of course you've got the choice you can have a cardioid or this one which is an Omni. The nice thing is is with an Omni you don't pick up the wind noise quite so easily although I've got the Comica uh, fl fluffy thing on top of the, the capsule so that nothing's going to hit it but um, if you take a cardioid that's going to be more susceptible to wind. But having said that, if you take a cardioid indoors, it might react better with the room and the reverberation. So I think perhaps indoors, you might want to try the cardioid version of this, which will knock out some of the room reverb and outdoors use the Omni because it rejects wind noise much better. So that's the sound of the Comica being used outside. Hope to see you next time. Cheers for now.